Before we jump into the review, folks, if you head on over to my website, you can sign up and grab a free copy of my guide to improving your portraiture. Link below. The Sony Alpha 3 is the first in a new generation of cameras. And I know it, I'm a bit late to the party. There's so many great reviews out there already talking about the dynamic range, the ISO performance, and how this interacts with flash given its new global shutter technology. I wanna do this video in three parts because really this is two different sets of equipment, I think in a way. You've got the body, which is in a way Sony's like 20th revision on a full frame mirrorless body. And then you've got the sensor technology, which is their first attempt out of the box. So I'm gonna talk about them separately, and then I'm gonna talk about price and revisit my original statement that got a lot of heat about whether this is indeed a niche camera. I've been shooting with this guy for a couple of weeks now in Hong Kong, doing portraits on the street here in Japan, doing all kinds of different stuff, as well as shooting snow monkeys and doing some long lens stuff. And let's first talk about the body because Gosh, they've gotten so much right with this. All of the ports are here that you could possibly want, including full-size HDMI. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six different port covers. Um, better than my Z9 has. Really nicely designed. It's got the best ergonomics of Sony, of any Sony Alpha camera to date. The best grip, the refined hand feel, how deep it is. Uh, the sloping area where the shutter release is, the dial layout on top has all been refined. It's the latest generation now. It is a bit odd having, you know, four different top dials that have different um, interfaces. Some are hold to turn, some are click to lock and unlock, some don't lock at all. That took a little bit of getting used to. It's got the extra uh, control button there, control five, which out of the box comes to boost your speed. Um, it's also got the best screen tilty flippy every single possible direction you could want it's phenomenal it also has the best evf it's actually the same evf that we've had on others but this one now has no performance hit before you only got the best resolution and best frame rate when you were basically playing back but as soon as you went to focus or shoot it all dropped back here you are getting the top quality at 120 frames a second all the time. It's also got the best autofocus refined from the A1 and the A7R5. It's pretty fantastic. I still did find some instances shooting the monkeys that it was detecting faces and eyes that weren't there. Something that I found with Fuji in the past. So it's not perfect, but it is definitely the best. Then the headliner, ridiculous, awe-inspiring, show-stopping speed. If you're using one of their compatible lenses up to 120 frames a second, 1 16,000th of a second for continuous shots or up to 1 80,000th for a single shot, which we'll talk about and the potential to sync your flash with that. Amazing, amazing stuff. I barely ever, except just to test it, wanted 120 frames per second, even as the monkeys were doing cute antics, 20 or 30 was plenty for me. Uh, but to have to know that you can just hit that boost button and get it, it's kind of, it really is next generation stuff. This festival has a 1200 year history where 25 and 42 year old men come to make offerings for good luck. And given it takes place at winter and they're half naked, it's mostly fueled by cheap sake, leading to some really <laughs> rowdy photo ops. The 9.3 also has arguably the best video capabilities of any camera. Before we even talk about, you know, the no rolling shutter aspect of this, breathing compensation, 4K 60p without a crop, pretty amazing stabilization, admittedly, with a big crop to achieve that. But if you want to be able to walk and film handheld without taking a gimbal, 
with a bit of care, you can really get some usable shots that you just wouldn't using just normal built-in IBIS or lens stabilization. You're also getting better shutter speeds now. If you're using like one, uh, 24 frames a second, you can get to 148th and 190th shutter speeds, which is great. Still no shutter angle, but seriously, this is bringing in some much higher level specifications that I actually think this may appeal to more videographers than photographers in terms of sheer numbers. So just a quick recap, best ergonomics, best DVF, best screen, best speed, best video. There is so much going right with this camera. And we're gonna come back to this when I talk about the price. It's better than all the other cameras in the range in all of those ways. And it's the sensor, which is actually what is being promoted the most, which is potentially the one thing that will stop people from buying it. Kind of counterintuitive. If you are a Sony Alpha shooter, check out my brand new Sony setup guide. This has been a long time in the making because there's so many different Sony cameras. There's so many differences between them. The men's views have changed over time. Going from one camera to the other or coming into the system can be quite daunting. My setup guide takes you through each of the different series in the range, how to set them up out of the box to start making great images with them. Takes you through all of the physical controls on each of the different cameras, how to you know, find your way around and what each different thing will do and what it will let you do. And then a complete menu deep dive taking you through the huge and exhaustive menu system and all the different ways in which you can customize these groundbreaking cameras for your particular style of shooting. Check it out, full details are below. The famous Onsen Monkeys are a great opportunity to test out both the autofocus and dynamic range of a camera, as the pure white snow and dark fur of the macaques can lead to a wide tonal range. You can download sample RAW files from the A93 for free at the link below. Now in terms of the speed of this guy, moving on now kind of still about the body but kind of some negatives. There's two caveats to that speed. Now firstly is the lenses. It's not all of the Sony lenses will give you 120 frames a second and Sony artificially limits heavily the speed you can get with third-party lenses like Sigma and Tamron and so forth like by 75 or 80 percent limited where you might be only getting 20 or 30 frames a second instead of 120. 20 or 30 frames is still fantastic, but I'm just pointing out these are the facts. So if that's enough for you, fantastic. If you really need the 120 for some reason, then be aware that you're going to need to use the limited number of Sony specific lenses that support that. And the media, there's just no getting away from it. I, to be honest, I don't know that even CF Express Type B would, unless it was generation four, would be able to keep up with this camera doing 120 frames per second in RAW. But CF Express Type A, with the cards that are supported in this camera right now, absolutely do not. And you're looking at getting like one second of shooting before you're going to start buffering. And I did a buffer test on this before. I do, I should clarify on that. It doesn't completely lock you out from all menus. There are some things you aren't able to adjust, but if you're a hybrid shooter like me, like say the other day I was shooting at the Onsen Monkeys, I'm shooting, I'm shooting, I've got the still I want. Now there's some cute interaction going on and I wanna grab a quick video clip as a hybrid shooter you are completely locked out from doing any kind of video. And if you've just say taken 80 or 90 shots, which keep in mind that's less than a second potentially on this camera, you could be waiting seconds, 10 seconds, depending on your cards, much longer than that for it to actually clear the buffer. That means you're going to miss out on the next thing it is that you were trying to film. During my time shooting in Tokyo, I took the A93 to Koshikawa Botanic Gardens to photograph the plum blossoms and native birds. The one time I did catch this kingfisher capturing his prey, he'd accidentally caught a rock and then spat it back out. Reminder, you can download sample files from the A93 at the link below. Now let's talk about this hugely expensive sensor in here. Uh, this is kind of the showstopper. This is what all of the hype was about. Global shutter. Don't get me wrong, it is amazing. It is the next generation and in years to come we will see Canon and Nikon 
forced to go down this road following pioneering Sony's, you know, advancements and full respect to them. First generation of everything is going to have some difficulties and you, this is bringing brand new stuff to the table. So I'm sure being that this is the hundredth video on this camera from big channels, you know the advantages of a global shutter. Instant readout, no distortion, no flickering lights. It has, it opens up a whole lot of things that other sensors just can't do. One of the biggest questions I got from people was, is this really any different to a Z8 or Z9 with their no mechanical shutter and very, very fast readout? Yes, it's still completely different technology. Imagine you've got two cars that can do the quarter mile. Both of them can do it fast. One is an internal combustion engine and one is a rocket from a spaceship. They, they, they are different technology. And just because one is really fast and one is instant, that sounds close enough. It's not the same, trust me. But it does mean that it's not like this is the best sensor on the market and then they've made it into a global sensor. Global sensor inherently has some trade-offs to get that instant readout. There's some great videos out there. I'm not gonna repeat all of it, but essentially the photo sites are smaller. There's more space being taken up by circuitry. You're gathering less light. You've got a higher base ISO, which means you're not able to get the cleanest files you would down at ISO 64 or 100. You're starting out at 250 or 320. And at those levels, you're still getting more noise than you would on comparable cameras anyway. It also means you're getting lower uh, dynamic range and you know worse kind of color and tonal performance, what we think of as high ISO performance. Um, Petapixel did a great video and their estimation is that this is at about the level you would expect for a modern APS-C sensor rather than full frame in terms of the you know those aspects hey folks i just wanted to jump in here and post those statements i made i pretty much stand by them the testing is what the testing is and people have done sensor tests on this but i've now shot what is it twenty thousand five hundred and seven images with the a9 mark iii and having looked at them they look fantastic i think this issue is kind of overblown I would still think that the image quality coming off the A1 overall is better and probably the A7R5 is the best of the alpha range at the moment. But nailing the exposure, even in those challenging situations with the macaques, the image quality is just fantastic. Just think about that you're shooting at ISO 250 and 320 rather than 100 and you should be able to assume you're gonna get similar kind of results than you do with the A7 IV. So I wouldn't let that image quality be an issue for you. On paper, maybe the dynamic range and tonal range is narrower than these other cameras, but practically, as long as you get your, your exposure right when you're shooting and you don't need to push or pull the files a lot, it really shouldn't be an issue. So that now brings us on to is this a niche camera and a little word about pricing. Let's do pricing first. If I compare this to say the A1 that I'm f shooting with, excluding sensors, you know, the, the, this is 24 megapixel and global and it's 50 megapixel and traditional stacked. Traditional, it's still cutting edge. Um, everything about this is better. It, the focus is better, the video capabilities is better, the body's better, screen EVF, all of that is better. And this has the latest, greatest cutting edge sensor in it. So on one hand, why doesn't this cost a lot more than the A1? And we can't really just say that it's because it all comes down to resolution, because look at how much A7S III's and you know, they're still selling for. But it is kind of a catch-22 and it's two steps forward, one step back. Like you get the instant readout, but then you sacrifice on dynamic range, that it's actually the flagship of this, the key selling point, the global shutter, is actually the thing that's keeping it from being even more expensive, I think. Because in every other regard, this is above the A1 in terms of specifications, in my thought anyway. Now, in my first video about the A9 III, I said that this was a $6,000, 24 megapixel niche camera. And the word niche seemed to really annoy some Sony shooters. So I think I should clarify, niche means that it's for a specialized segment of the market. It's not a mass market product that's going to appeal to all shooters. 
and I actually really stand by that. I mean, of the high frames per second shooters, who is finding 30 frames a second not enough? And then from that group, who is willing to sacrifice losing the 50 megapixels and the better image quality that the A1 has to get the 120 frames a second at 24 megapixel at a worse image quality that this camera offers. I think it's a niche subset of those high frame per second shooters. And speaking on behalf of myself and a lot of wildlife shooters I know, I think most of them would rather have the extra megapixels to be able to crop. So it's going to be a select group of the sports shooters who would go for this one in my estimation. And then of course the other big benefit of global shutter, the flash sync capabilities, it is amazing, but of the portrait photographers using high speed flash sync for their work, how many would rather have 24 megapixel with limited image quality at a higher price to get that flash sync as opposed to using an A7R5 with amazing image quality, 61 megapixel at a lower price. I think it's a small subset. The A7R5 is arguably a mass appeal portrait camera. The A1, a mass appeal high frames per second camera. The A7 IV, a mass appeal generalist camera. But I think the A9 III has little extra things that make it a niche appeal camera to a bunch of different genres of photography. But I do think it is a niche appeal camera nonetheless. Let me know what you think. Please do check out my new Sony setup guide. I'll see you guys soon.